Hello, everyone, and welcome to the channel and this series, Zero to Paper, where starting from absolute zero, we plan to do novel ML research and hopefully publish a paper by the end of the series. This is going to be part two of the series where I want to talk about three primary things. First, I want to go over the general research topic that we'll be working on throughout this series. Then secondly, I want to talk about how I personally come up with my research ideas and what matters to me when I'm deciding what to pursue because there are so many options. And I'm hoping that going through that might also help people that are looking to start their own research. And the third thing that I wanna go over is how my personal values and what I prioritize led me to choose this specific topic for research and why I think it can actually have a fairly profound impact on this field. Lastly, before we get started, I just wanna say I'll have another short announcement about the Discord and about collaborating, how you can be a part of that at the very end of the video. So make sure to stick around if you are interested in that. So let's get started with the general research idea that we'll be working on or what we want to achieve. And that is we want to be able to convert a piece of text or some sort of goal specified by text to a reward function for a reinforcement learning problem. Now, if you don't know what reinforcement learning is, no problem, go check the description of this video. I'll make sure to link a tutorial series that can catch you up to speed if you want to participate or be able to understand the series as we go along. So let me give you all an example so that this will hopefully make a bit more sense. So take the example of a robot. Nowadays, well, you can simulate robots for one, but even if you look at companies like Boston Dynamics, there's all sorts of really cool robots. So imagine we want to use reinforcement learning to train this robot to do a backflip. This is kind of difficult. We can definitely do it, but one of the difficulties in the process is defining the reward function, specifically because the start state and the end state of this robot doing a backflip are probably gonna be roughly the same, right? They're standing straight up or so something along those lines. So what actually matters is the process along the way. And it might be hard if we want to define what a backflip is as some sort of reward function, right? Like, is it when your feet go right above your head or is it the process of having your feet like slightly above your head to the right then above then to the left? And you know, there's all sorts of these weird little things you can add in that make this sort of difficult to specify with just a hard coded reward function. My point being is that it isn't very clear what exactly a backflip is, and because of that, it's a bit hard to craft a reward function. Now, wouldn't it be a lot nicer if we could just say, do a backflip and have that text then translated into a reward function, leveraging the incredible work in NLP and computer vision that's been done up to date? That is sort of the idea for this project, and if that's something that interests you, definitely stick around. From here, I wanna move into talking a little bit about what's important to me in research, and then from there, we'll move into why I chose this research idea specifically and why I think it's so important. So there's two primary things that I consider when I'm deciding what sort of research I wanna do and what I wanna pick up. And the first one is that it needs to be interesting, right? You know, you don't wanna do research if it's not something you're passionate about or not something you have a deep found interest in because you know, if you're doing research and trying to put a paper out, well, you don't wanna get two months in and then be burnt out because you've just been working your butt off for two months on something you couldn't give, you know, a flying about. So it needs to be interesting. I think that's, you know, needless to say. The second thing though is I want whatever I'm working on to, I wanna be able to see a potential positive impact. Now I use positive impact a little bit loosely here because that could mean several things. It could mean a social good positive impact, or it could mean helping researchers in the field, or it could mean advancing the field. It could mean a number of things, but really the point is, you know, I don't want to work towards publishing a paper just for the sake of publishing a paper that kind of defeats the point, right? Research in my eyes, you know, everyone has a different opinion, but in my eyes, it's something that should extend the knowledge of the field and provide some level of value. And if I don't see that level of value in a project that I have an idea about, I'm probably not gonna end up pursuing it. That being said, this project I think absolutely has that value. That is one of the guiding principles that led me to come up with this idea specifically. When I was thinking about different ideas to possibly work on, one thing that was constantly in my mind was how can we progress general artificial intelligence algorithms? Narrow artificial intelligence can do some incredible feats, but really the holy grail of the whole field, right, is making more generalized agents that perform well in a myriad of different situations. To start the thinking process, I laid out three different types of machine learning and thought about which ones could help the most towards achieving some general agent. So that would be supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Now, I think all three of these subfields will definitely have some sort of impact when it comes to making more general algorithms, but that being said, 
I think reinforcement learning by a long shot will have the biggest impact and will be the biggest carrier to this end goal of general algorithms. That might be a little bit of a controversial statement, so let me go ahead and explain a bit of my reasoning. Let's start with supervised learning. Supervised learning is really great for all sorts of tasks, but it has one very clear weakness, and that is you almost always, or I guess you do always need labeled data. And labeled data can be very expensive time-wise and money-wise to generate. And if we want to scale this up to all sorts of tasks and generalize to all sorts of new tasks an agent has never seen, well, we'd have to have a ridiculous amount of trained data, which is very hard to scale. Second up is unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning is a step in the right direction, right? We don't need any sort of labeled data. We don't need to generate these labels, which saves us a lot of time. But also, unsupervised learning doesn't usually get us towards a goal unless it's something general like clustering, right? We can't really specify any sort of specific task we want to complete. And that is why I think unsupervised learning will play a role in lots of these general agents, but it will be more in the form of knowledge representation and ideas similar to that. For reinforcement learning, you need an agent, you need an environment, and you need a goal. If you have those three things along with a good algorithm, you should hopefully be able to complete a lot of general tasks. So first, the environment. Now, it can be difficult to create an environment, but and this is a pretty big, I guess, if here, but if we can make algorithms efficient enough to just use the real world as our environment, well, suddenly the whole environment is really no issue, and we just need an agent and a goal at that point. Now for agents, we can actually make agents that are task agnostic, which is very nice. You look at Boston Dynamics and these other crazy companies that are creating these really cool robots, and you can already start to see how we can make these robots that can do things, a lot of the things humans can do, and the robotics in that area are only getting better day by day. So that leaves us with one thing, and that one thing is the goal. We need some sort of goal, or more specifically, a reward function is what we need. Now, this is a little bit of a problem because while reward functions might not be too hard to craft in the case of a simple problem like cart pull or something like that, you could imagine that if we need to make reward functions for all sorts of tasks and they need to be these general reward functions that support things like curriculum learning and all sorts of other types of learning, well, that's not very scalable either. It would be nice if we could auto-generate reward functions for these, but that's not really possible, is it? After all, if we wanted to auto-generate these, we would need to understand the relationship between coding these complex reward functions and understanding what goals general AI would want to achieve. There's, it'd be very difficult to auto-generate those through some sort of email program. Now, there are some papers on this, so I won't say it's completely impossible, but they are very limited in their scope. This might be something that's more generally possible in the future, but for now at least, I think we're still a long way from having the results I would like to see in that area. What if, however, we can convert text-based goals to reward functions. Now this opens up a few new possibilities, right? All of a sudden, it wouldn't be so hard to mass produce these. You could have probably one human over the course of an hour make tens if not a couple hundred of these text-based goals. Heck, you might even be able to start automatically producing these using something like a GAN. And if you can do that, if you essentially have an environment that you really don't have to worry about because the real world handles all this simulation, and you have an agent that can work in almost any sort of task, and you have goals that can be auto-produced and turned into reward functions, well, now you have a formula for massive scaling and training at a crazy speed. And that is one of the huge differentiators, I think, between the potential of reinforcement learning and other types of machine learning when it comes to building general agents. Reinforcement learning, I believe, has a lot more potential to scale with minimal human intervention. Now, I admit I'm leaving out a lot of details here, and there are a lot of counter arguments you could have to this. Maybe I'll go over them in a future video, but for now, the point is that I think RL really has a crazy potential to scale, and that idea is one of the core reasons why I ended up choosing this specific research idea, this text-to-goal research idea. Now, there are also several other benefits to the idea of text-to-goal, one of those being it just being a lot easier to specify goals, and another one being that making these very complex goals wouldn't require a bunch of if statements and a lot of complicated logic that would suddenly become a lot easier. But I think the most important factor here is that scaling factor. So that is the reason I want to go with text-to-goal for the research for this project and this series, and that is the vision for the future I see for this entire line of work going into the future. Anyways, I hope you found that somewhat interesting, and I hope you also share the same excitement that I do about working on this type of topic. I think it's really incredible, the possibilities that it could hold. 
I do have a short announcement I wanna go over now. And that is, first First of all, I just wanna thank everyone that has been supportive of this series. I say this series, but this is only episode two, but oh my gosh, everyone came in droves to support the first episode and support the vision I have for this series. So thank you so much for everyone that has shown your support. It's been overwhelming already and we're just getting into this. I am so excited to see what's to come. Now, if you do want to collaborate, help out with this project, I will be making a Discord channel because of all the support I received for the first episode, and that will be coming very soon. The next episode of this series will cover how to join the Discord and then how you can start collaborating through the literature review process, through sharing papers and reading papers, summarizing papers, and going over all that, and then where we are going to go from there. So if you are interested in collaborating like that, do make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you get a notification when that video comes out. Otherwise though, thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next video.